where we are right now is that if you have a job that is, you know, remote, doable remotely, which at this point is most laptop jobs, right? The computers most white can, collar can jobs. Maybe get better at that. Yeah, it feels really achievable that we're going to be able to get there. This is very unintuitive because forever technology replaced blue collar work, but now technology is replacing the bureaucrats and the blue collar like plumbers are like we're fine. But yeah, like but like but like the like the like annoying lawyer people are like they're in trouble. <laughs> I mean, the thing we, the thing right now is what we're seeing is that technology is basically eliminating the rote parts of the jobs, right? Mm. You know, so when I was, when I used to program, I remember I would, you know, have to write all these like XML configs. And nowadays, you know, you just ask, you know, GPT-4 and it'll just, it'll, it'll write the XML configs for you. But you want to do something really interesting, then, you know, you need to bring your human intelligence to the problem, even if it's just telling the model, you know, how to go about it. So you're closer to this than... 99.999% 99.999% of people in the world. So I want to ask your intuition because I've talked to, to, to Sam, obviously, who's, who's, who's involved in this. And I think you may even be more technical than him and you're really close to the research. So, you know, the next 10, 20 years, like what else are you going to, I mean, are you just going to be able to do everything people can do in five or 10 years? Is this like a total change in all of reality by the 2030s? Is there, are there actually a lot more steps potentially still? Like what's going to happen here? Yeah. I mean, the thing about AGI, artificial general intelligence, which is people call AGI, is that it's very clear to me, and I think it's clear to people who are working in the field, that progress is gonna to continue to happen. What's hard to predict is when you actually are able to do a particular job. Um, when the, the, there's so many different things that are wrapped up in any particular job um, that it may turn out that something we didn't even expect was the last thing that that needed to be automated. So I, I think we're going to have a long time. We may not have like perfectly realistic Westworld robots walking around in like seven or eight years. That's robotics, ro- for robotics, we're probably going to need AI to write that to figure out how to build robots for us. But I mean, you're going to get. I mean, so I mean, that's that's the other question is, you know, I, I don't know what's what public or not. So push back on me. But like, you know, the thing I've heard from various people is you could probably do GPT five and six and maybe seven with people. And then at some point you're going to need to get to eight or nine or whatever. You're going to need GPT itself to do that. If I was running a research group, I'd already be trying to probably figure out how to get this thing to teach itself in, in different ways. That's probably like, there's lots of concepts there. I'd imagine that you're trying to figure out like, like how far are we away from it teaching itself? And is that, is that a thing you guys are working on that you could say? Yeah, I mean, I think that's what everybody's, I think that's sort of the open problem that everybody sees right now is that, um, you know, the, the current, as you say, the current GPTs are all just mimicking what humans do. So how do you, how do you unlock creativity, right? And, and if you think about it, it's that same problem we had with Dota or with games where because you have this structured environment of a game. It, it was able to be created within the structured environment by trying right. new things. So how do you give it, how do you give it the ability to be created within the structured environment of reality? And that, that we don't know. And I, and I think the, the interesting thing even now is just how do you build a structure of reality for the agent to play in? That's um, interesting. I, I mean, I can imagine you already have lots of versions of 3D structures of reality, obviously, for robotics to play in. But, but that I, guess, I guess it's more complicated to have a structure of like human reality. I, I think the most interesting structure we have now is actually the, the compiler, the interpreter, and being able to write code, run code, see what happens. Interesting. So rather, so, so that's actually a more dynamic place for them to live is like learning how to write code and iterating on what happens with code it writes. Yeah, I, spent a, I actually spent a lot of time at OpenAI thinking about 3D worlds. And, you know, ultimately the, the problem with the 3D world is, is it's very limited because yeah. it, you, it, you have to create everything interesting that's in there. That's fair. Right? There's no, there's no, I guess you could create a bunch of like, like human and emotional actors or something like this for it to interact with, but you're going to create some really dorky robots. They're all just going to be really good coders. <laughs> You won't, but hey, you know what? You can be you, you can be all the non dorkiness. Uh, you can, no. can bring humans can bring the non dorkiness, well, and you know the. I, I the, will not be able to bring that, but <laughs> normal people will be able to bring that for you. It's almost like you kind of need more human data. Like you need more data about how people just do normal human things and how they're feeling and how they're thinking, right? Because that's that's what we're missing. Well, it's unclear. the The funny thing is, there's actually a ton of just if you just think about the internet, it is so huge. There's so much. And so there is a lot of data out there about how, you know, if you think about a math problem, like how to approach the math problem, um, how to iterate on it, how to work with it. And then the other thing that we've done and that other companies have done in the last couple of years is hire humans to give us data. So, you know, you start by training these models like GPT-4 on the internet. And there's this finishing step that you do, which is called reinforcement learning from human feedback or RLHF. Mm -hmm. Um, reinforcement learning. It's like Pavlog's dogs. You know, you give it a treat if it does the right thing and human feedback means that you have humans who are, who are doing it. Yeah. And so they'll have it, you know, try to solve a problem. And if it has a good approach to solving a problem, then they'll say, great, you had a great approach, whether it got the right answer or not, that turns out to be really helpful. 
um, and just do this over and over again. And you don't have a ton of data compared to what you pre-trained on. One thing that's been unintuitive to a lot of us, uh, we, we haven't, we haven't cu caught up on any of this, is just that you'd think it would get better and better over time, but a lot of people seem to experience it getting worse over time, at least their latest interactions. Are they correct that, it's, that somehow some, some parts of it seem to be getting worse over time, or do you have any thoughts on that? Uh, we, th we think it's actually getting better over time. That so, you know, so, Some of the reports are sort of confounding various different so, so things. So people are just confused about I think I think people are just confused about this. Because even really smart friends of mine who are close to me feel like it's not answering them as well as it was, but maybe they, maybe they just got too, expectations too high or got confused on that somehow, huh? Well, I mean, the, the models are stochastic. So, you know, it's definitely going to be the case that the, the, the answer you remember is the one when it got it right. And it's, yeah, it doesn't display yeah. that flash of brilliance all the time. And what's your intuition that you could say for, I mean, obviously GPT-3 was just fundamentally different than two and four is much better than three. Like, are, are we getting to an asymptote here with your work? Is, is five just like way better than four? Like, how, how, how are you feeling about this? The way I think about it is that we are still pretty far away from the level of scale that is the human brain. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's no reason for there to be an asymptote. I think it just keeps working. When you say level of scale, what's the intuition for that? Like what's the scale of three or four versus five or six? Yeah, so you can count the number of neurons. And you know, this, again, like I said, this is very rough it's because a, 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 a computer neuron and a brain neuron are not at all the same thing. You know, there's probably an order of, you know, it, it takes, you know, 10 or 100 neurons to simulate a, a neuron in the brain. Um, but you know, if you look at something like GPT-3, you can say, oh, well, that's maybe a lizard number of neurons. And GPT-4 is like maybe a cat. Um, and you still have many orders of magnitude to go before you get to something that is actually the same size as a human. Is that really relevant though? Because I mean, you'd say this is human, you say this is a blue whale, and it's like a lot more. And the blue whales aren't, I, I assume, they're not much smarter than us. Yeah, so, we, we, we don't know, actually. I guess we don't but, know. They could have been doing really cool like, philosophy in the ocean that we don't know about. But, you know, I think the, the other <laughs> thing is that if you, if you think about the, the data a blue whale is trained on, it's trained on, you know, where are the fish, when does it open its mouth, and, you know, when does it swallow? And, you know, it's not we're training, we're training on the human data, right? So you want to something a size human brain train on the human data. It's, it's, so you still think it gets a lot better the next three, four or five years. Like we're, we're on a curve right now. Like the world, I mean, it makes sense to make that for forever to work on AI because it's going to be so much more important in three years. So that's your, that's your I, I don't see any reason for it to stop. So there's no number of years in which it would start to asymptote int intuitively to you. Well, look, I mean, I, I don't think I can put a number of years on it, but I think when you pass human level intelligence, that's where it gets kind of crazy in lots of different ways. You know, maybe, maybe learning by mimicking humans no longer works. Maybe there's an asymptote there. Uh, maybe we have to switch to one of these other techniques. Maybe you'll feel, finally feel understood by a creature. <laughs> <laughs> they're, 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 the way I sleep at night on this is I assume that there must be like multiple different S's. So like everyone always assumes there's like an exponential that just goes to the moon and the world's over, you know, in a singularity. And I always assume there's like this and then another S and then another S. Is it possible there's there these like different paradigms we have to figure out that could take a while? Or do you think you guys have it all figured out enough to, to go yeah, all the way? Yeah, I, I think there really are. I, I, think, I think the, you know, these, are, these things are fractal, right? And so in some sense, the paradigm is neural networks. But in another sense, well, you needed to figure out transformers. Yep. And so each of these S curves, that, that this is a thing that genuinely happens. Each one is some new way of making sure that you can fit more compute and more data into a larger network. And you know, every time you sort of see a peaking, you need to have some sort of breakthrough. But it's not as fundamental a breakthrough as it was before. Like the difference between neural networks and linear regression was really big. And the difference between neural networks now and neural networks two years ago is just a series of tricks.